Hi everyone, my name is Cameron, and today I'm doing another book review on Sam Walton, and I'm also going to be talking about some other stuff too, like um, Friends and Sam Walton. But not only that, um, right now we are in a pretty bad situation. We are not as bad as Italy or China yet, but um, every single state ha now has confirmed cases of the, the new uh, virus. So, oh, we didn't stock up too much on food. We just bought some toilet paper. Um, oh, enough toilet paper that would last us at least 12 months, <laughs> a year. But uh, we didn't buy that much. We ordered it off Amazon because uh, they're, they're sold at all the stores. And I had to make some homemade spray, which, uh, like, uh, the hand sanitizing spray. It worked. Well, I I just got a mixture of like um, what's the thing they use to wash the dishes? Like the really strong stuff, like detergent or something. And I just mixed it with water, shook it up a lot, and put it into a spray. And then I used to spray people and wore them to spray windows. And so, well, uh, the toilet paper, I was, it was stacked up to the ceiling. But don't worry, we just there were uh, there was really big rolls, and we just like put them on top of each other. So we got around like uh, we got around, like at least. Fit. No, we counted at least 80 rolls, but less than 90. So it's like 84, I got around that. Um, but it's okay because if we don't use it during this outbreak, we'll use it sometime in our life. We'll use it next year or something. But, and uh, my mom t uh, my mom told me a lot about uh, like the new virus, stay away from people. We just we went biking because you do social distancing and biking where you drive, uh, where you bike so fast, no one can breathe on you. And also when you bike, you stay away from people because people are too afraid to get run over by your bike. So yeah, I think it's pretty safe. It's safer, um, it's safer than tennis. I played tennis yesterday and uh, I can't, I didn't go today because my mom thought it would be unsafe and my dad wanted to go biking. So tomorrow we're gonna play tennis, but in a very, um, very quiet place where there's not much people. Because uh, the tennis court next to our house is very crowded. There's like 20 courts. And it's uh, there's a lot of people there. So we, we don't want to risk it. So we're just going to some random place. So um, without further ado, let's get on to Sam Walton. And all right, Made in America. Okay, let's finish what we said last time. So uh, last time we talked about how they, like, the size they were targeting, um, going. Now, let's get on to what we're doing today. All right. So, uh, these, they didn't really decide to do much advertising because usually people, when they start the store, the first thing they think about is just spend a ton of money on Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising, they're the worst. Because, like, right up, when, when you're about to see something very exciting, like poof, out of nowhere, and it's not. Sometimes they warn you, sometimes they don't. But uh, should I tell totally you lower it down? All right. Um. Let's get back onto our video. Uh, all right. So, what was I talking about there? Oh yeah, advertising. So, if we're in a really small place like he usually goes to, I'm not anymore. Now you see Walmart everywhere in the biggest cities. They are like LA or something. But uh, he just well at the time he didn't do any advertising, not much at all. He barely spent like a few dollars, but um. So he didn't, he didn't think he'd need it because one, the advertising wouldn't be much worth it because not that many people in the town anyways. And two, it would come from mouth to mouth. Um, meaning that like they would tell each other what would happen. Like one person goes to the store, then go to their friend like, hey, look, this new place called Walmart. And then they'll tell their friends. So um, like, uh, like word. With a mouth. Yeah, word would get. Uh, With a mouth. Referral or oh, what's the mouth? Hmm. Yeah, what's the mouth? 
would just get spread really quickly to a really small town. But if you're going to really big towns, there's too much people to cover, so you need a ton of bags. Um, so, yeah, they've never really been big advertisers because you don't really see Walmart putting ads. I mean, you might see on some billboards. I have I haven't really seen much. But they don't do any much advertising. I don't see them on YouTube. I don't see them like pretty much anywhere. They just do their own thing by just putting a bunch of uh, stores everywhere. So, all right. So, <clears throat> oh yeah. Then they said that they became their own competitors because they have they say that the Walmart would be um they would have forty stores back then. Uh, that would be within a hundred miles from each other. So they were really close. Now, unless it's not even 100 miles, it's like 50 miles from each other. Because you have one city, then you have another, but they're kind of like right next to each other because you could do a 10 minute drive in between. That's like how the targets work, but I think Walmart is a little more spread out. But in the way they became their own competitors, meaning this Walmart is competing with the other Walmart to see who would get more sales. Um, that's, I don't think that's really a good idea. I mean, he does it and it's working, but like, uh, if we do that, you're pretty much, uh, you're kind of competing against yourself. But at the same time, you're still getting all the money. So, but you still do twice the expenses, just with the same customers. But, uh, so there's a lot of Walmarts, and they're just competing against each other for money. All right. So right here, they said, uh, they said that they had 500 servers running from about 30,000 to 60,000 square feet. Is that a lot? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Thirty thousand square feet. I think that's for the whole store. Um, but I think that's pretty huge. What's well, a lot bigger than like any house? Pretty much, your house should not be as big as a Walmart. Um, it should. Uh, if you have a okay size, then it'd probably be like I don't know, a quarter of Walmart. Well, if you get Walmart, it's going to be like half the block, maybe. It's huge. So, uh. All right, let's get down to this one. Um, okay, you know I'm talking about like how the population, small towns, and they just like, uh, now I'm talking about how they created a bunch of new friends. Uh, they made some friends in Florida, Yankee, uh, Yankee friends, and they met some people up north. And now, um, what pretty much this is that they're pretty much like kind of uh, in a way, networking with he random, like, not random people, but, like, people that could help them. So, like, you kind of need friends. Like, you really need friends because you can't really do much without them since think of it as, like, a trade. If you have more variety, you kind of win because if you have a store and you have only one thing in the market, then you're not going to do too well because you just have one thing. Yes, some stores... Like, do really well selling one product, but they need some, like, um, variety because, uh, you can't just go to a Walmart that only, that only sells water bottles or something. Well, I mean, some places like, uh, Yamaha, they sell pianos, but I think they sell some, uh, uh, they sell some other styles, too. They don't just sell pianos, they sell electric pianos. I think we have one, like, right there. It's also electric, and I'm, I'm pretty, yeah, it's from Yamaha, too, but, uh, and just look at Apple. They don't just sell laptops. No, no. Yeah, they don't sell just uh, MacBooks. They sell phones and iPads, too. So, um, in a way, uh, if you have more friends, you have more variety. Because then you have more, like, it's a potluck. And you put more stuff in. You take some out. So, um, you can have new friends. And like I mentioned last time, you want to outgrow them. You want to outgrow them. Because think of these as, like, checkpoints. Your friends are checkpoints. You're not checking them or anything, but... Um, they're supposed to help you. You help each other out. You could be their checkpoint. They could be your checkpoint. Uh, so it's kind of like a deal. And you want to be better than them. But uh, you don't bring them down. You give them advice too. Because you, remember, you guys are a team. But you want to be able to um, grow out of your friend groups. And keep on going bigger into more friends. And then keep on going bigger. And sometimes your friends will grow with you too. And uh, that, that one or two friends in your friend group might come with you and then join some other friend groups too. And like each grade level or like each school, you need to make new friends and nothing wrong with them because your old friends might have some old stuff too. And you need to, uh, remember, um, you need different friends for different stuff. 
So yeah, you have some study friends and you have some fun friends. I have some fun friends at, at the playground and I also have some uh, smart friends that I hang out during class time. They're both fun, but some things are, uh, but some of them are better at different things. And uh, remember, they have skill sets. So um, if someone's really good at school, I talk to them, I hang out with them, I teach them how to have fun, I teach them how to have things they don't know too, then I get some stuff out of them too. And the fun people, um, I kind of help them, and then they help me uh, enjoy some myself too. So, um, yeah, if you know how it kind of goes, and you just need a lot more friends, and uh, you need to learn how to like uh, start a conversation. But um, you could pretty much just go on Google and type up, I need some friends, how do I get some friends? And then this random stuff will pop up. <clears throat> but what you pretty much are going to do is just walk up to a person that you, um, that you know a little, and start asking them some questions. Don't ask them questions first, just talk to them. Just like try to introduce yourself like, hi, I'm Cameron, and um, I barely do this. Uh, <laughs> usually we just, the teacher will sign us a partner project, and then we start talking there. We say, we start talking about the project, and then we just eventually get to know each other. Or we just do something fun, and we go on a team, and then we just like hang out. But um, if you don't have uh, much of that, and you're just wandering around, then you should walk up to them and uh, get some conversations that are off Google. Like talk about something that makes you laugh. Or like an event that's going on. Talk about the new virus, but don't laugh at it because it's also a serious deal. Just ask them, like, um, are you preparing? Are you prepared? Uh, do you know what you're doing? And just ask uh, some interesting things. So, alright, let's go over here. It says that they bought one of the first planes for the business. Um... And he just bought like uh Tim Walton. He tries to buy the cheapest stuff there is. He um but when it comes to like uh what's it called again? Uh buying. Uh he, for his customers he spends a lot of money. Uh meaning that like he almost went bankrupt. He pretty much I think they bought bankrupt before. I don't even know. I need I'm I need to Google it up. Uh but all I know is that they've been to a lot of debt before. <laughs> and you no, know, um when you're starting there's gonna be some bad stuff happening. Like when you first um start a new grade level, you might start to screw up a little, but near the end you'll start to like get hang with it. So, uh yeah, uh they just had to go through a lot of stuff and had to persevere. So, all right, now they're just talking about how they're spreading out the Walmart and also the airplane they bought wasn't that. I mean, it's it's still kind of expensive. It's an airplane, but it only goes a hundred miles per hour, which is um. <clears throat> it's fast in the car. Um, a car could go faster, yeah, but um, you're not going to drive through the street at 100 miles per hour. Or you're, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to. That most you would go to like 70. Uh, and you're still kind of breaking the speed limit. But uh, still, it's kind of a slow plane compared to like now the commercial ones that go like four. No, not like three or four hundred maybe. But all right, let's get into these. I think we're done for this page, and let's go to the next one, <clears throat> and, uh, the Bud, who was the, I'm not sure it's Bud Walton, that's no, not Bud Walton, Buzz Aldrin, no, 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 not Buzz Aldrin, uh, what is this, uh, Bud, or Buzz, hold on, I need to see what his name was, uh, well, um, whatever, Buzz or Buzz, Bud, um, they went around to every store to inspect everything, but now they don't, because, uh, one, they passed away, but um, after that, it grew too fast, and they can't just visit every single Walmart. So, at the beginning, it was a good strategy. I mean, it was kind of like a good, like, um, like uh, technique or plan, excuse me, where every store you make as a franchise, they would go around and expect, like, hey, is it too close enough to work? Hey, are you selling the right stuff? And, and they inspect, like, they visit every single one, making sure they do everything right, because... Um, Sam Walton's not going to be at every Walmart. He's probably going to be at one or at home because he's probably retired. Um, but he's going to have to visit every single one uh, so that he knows what they're up to. Because uh, look at McDonald's. Uh, they were At the beginning, they were good. They were fresh. They were doing perfect. But then, all of a sudden, uh, the McDonald brothers, who eventually sold the business uh, to Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc, he was supposed to visit every single one. But then he got a little carried away, and he didn't visit every single one. And the McDonald's brothers, they didn't really, uh, they didn't really go to every Walmart. 
We watched the movie. Uh, well, it's kind of like a documentary, kind of. But they didn't visit every single Walmart, and they tried to kind of cheat by using milkshake powders. I'm not sure they still do. I think they still do it. I don't even know. But that's when the milkshake powders start, where you get a powder, mix it with water, and it's like an instant milkshake. But I, I don't think they do it anymore. I don't know because um, <clears throat> that's probably like a lot like the 1900s. But uh, maybe they use fresh ice cream. Maybe they use powders. Um, all I know is that they used to do it. So, all right, let's get over here. So now he, he like pretty much he quit. Uh, he quit visiting every single store until they grew up to about 120 to 130 stores. Because you can't visit 120 stores. I mean, you can, but it's going to take a really long time. And you, you have better things to do also, other than traveling all day to different stores. So, and, alright, so, right so, what, here, so what they do? They cannot visit 120 stores? Okay, uh, they, after they got to 120 stores, or like 130 stores, they stopped visiting them. Because it was kind of too much, and then they have the managers take care of it. Mm -hmm. That's why you have managers so that you don't have to do it. Because, okay, um, they were kind of like small bosses where they would just do your work, and you would uh, do something that uh, then you control them too. Because, like, um, let's say you have 100 stores, and you need 100 of you to manage those stores, but, you, but you're only one person, so you need to hire so other people to watch them for you. It's like babysitters. You have like a ton of these babies, and you can't watch all of them, so you need some like a manager or babysitter to take care of them for you. Uh, so, um, and right here it says, until they had 500 stores, they kept up with every single real estate deal they made, and they got to view um, most locations before they signed any kind of commitment. I mean, that after 500 stores, that was too much, but um, they they started uh they actually inspected their own real estate deals that like, had hey, went by a store and they ended up uh, having to go to every single store saying are you sure you want this are you sure you want this, but they just stopped either one because they got too old or they just like some bad stuff happened uh, not not bad stuff but like I don't know why they just stopped uh so also um speaking of stopping like you should never stop. Because if you're, if you're doing super well, and you think you have it made, and you stop, then you're going to lose it all. Um, because there's, I heard of this one like, NBA mm -hmm. player, he made it to 100 millions, and he started slacking off, and he started partying a lot, he got all carried away with some money, and now he went bankrupt, and now he makes, um, what his net worth is like 800 something K, which is like less, no, no, no like, uh, all I know is that it's less than a million, um, net worth, um, this is something about, like, I think it's, like, 100k, that's, that's really sad, uh, he used to be really rich, but he stopped, and he lost it all, because, um, just because you have it all, it doesn't mean you can't lose it all, because someone's gonna catch up to you, someone's become better, just because you're the best player, doesn't mean you're always gonna be the best player, you're gonna get older, and you're going to, like, stop, uh, you try not to stop with what you can because you want to enjoy while you're older because when you stop, you can enjoy yourself. Meaning, you know that you truly cannot do anything else. You're 80 years old, you could barely move, and now it's time for you to rest. You don't rest when you're, when you're still growing because then you have to grow when you're like 80, and then you're not going to do that. So, um, that's why you work first, then play, then play first and work. My teacher taught me that. We're doing a lesson on procrastinating. Uh, don't procrastinate. Get your work done first. My mom says that. So you, um, when you're younger, you have to start and you have to do all your work so that you don't have to do it when you're older. And when you're older, you can relax while you have your managers do your work. So um, so yeah, make sure that uh, no one passes you. It's kind of a competition. But uh, sometimes it isn't because if someone passes you, then you're gonna lose like very badly because um do you have you ever heard of the of the world's fastest racer in the first place oh yeah for nothing but have you ever heard of the second fastest person on earth no <laughs> even but, though they're like you know uh, yeah, they're, they're famous. second by one second <laughs> yeah like half a second no 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 actually no no races, they lost by half a second people don't even know oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> races place. they mm -hmm. don't go by seconds 
they go by like milliseconds, like fractions of yeah. seconds. Uh -huh. Half a second, that's a lot. You win by a lot. Because if like, the person's right here, another person's right here, you won by a lot. If you're right next to each other and you're like a millimeter away, that's when you say, oh, he won. So, um, like a small mistake like that, you rested for a little, you celebrated and you calmed down and you had this dude just passed you and you're trying to run faster, but you got tired after celebrating too much and now this guy just beat you and maybe a billion people know you but not seven well seven billion know the first place guy but maybe only one billion know you so um if you're not first you're last my mom taught me that because um if you're not first then you, no one knows who you are you're not a nobody because you can still climb back up uh meaning that if you're still last you could go up because um just look at Michael Jordan, no, was it Michael Jordan? Um, but like at the beginning, he like he got declined from a lot of uh, teams because he did pretty bad. But uh, he started going to play basketball every day after school. Shot like a hundred or so hoops every single day before school and after school. He became the best because he set his mind to it. If you know you want, you're going to do a good on a business, then try to sell something before school. Try to go and say, hmm, I'm going to sell how this. Before school, I'm going to buy a ton of stuff off Amazon. Now the school, I start going to I set up a stand or something and call it a garage six. But like, other than that, I haven't gone to RC, I haven't gone to a garage sale at all. But um, back onto here, just like, just don't let someone pass you. And uh, like, keep it up. So, let's go over there. So, I remember something and that was very important. But I kind of forgot. It was, I knew somewhere in this paragraph. I'm still trying to dig through it. But now uh, they say that the reason uh, they weren't be uh, they he was able to work real well pilots. Um, thinking they, I love the flying, the challenge of fighting my way over the country, elevating the weather, and initial approaches, doing it myself. Meaning that um, Sam Alton was one of the people who liked to do it himself. Um, like, would you rather just watch someone do your work or do the work yourself? Because I don't know why. I feel like I cannot watch people do work. Um, I could do, I could watch people do work. I don't, I could manage people because then that's my work. But my manager doing the random stuff, I'm like, no, you're not supposed to do that. No, you're not supposed to do that. Um, so I, I kind of like control. I don't know why. It just feels, I just, it just feels good because, um, I don't want people doing work for me. I mean, I'm fine with it if I'm struggling, but if I'm fully capable, and then those people are like handicapping me, I'm doing my work, like, I got this, and I'm like, hurry up, hurry up, and they're like, chill, I'm trying to do this, like, no, 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 uh, what about, like, it's like a back, I'm kind of like a backseat driver, <laughs> like, um, I would be, uh, some, if I was driving, and this guy comes up saying, hey, can I drive for you, I'm like, no, you're not going to drive too good. And then when they're driving, they'd be like, no, turn left. No, I said turn left. And then they're just, um, I feel like, yeah, you just want, you want control. Because you don't want someone to take power over you. Because, would, would you be a puppet? You don't want to be a puppet. You want to be the guy who's controlling you, a puppet. So, if you're a puppet, you're swaying to whatever the person does to you. And sometimes the puppet's stubborn and he might just, like, do nothing. He might be too heavy or something. But at least if you're the controller of the puppet, you know what you're doing. But there's some bad sides of it, meaning you might accidentally break the puppet, or you might do so, you might do bad. So if you need help, let someone control you. But no, don't let someone control you permanently. Let someone who's better than you teach you, not control you. Like you don't do someone's work to help them. You help them by saying, "Here." Uh, like if someone's trying to find a math problem, like what's two times two? Just say, "Okay, what's two times one? Two. Now multiply that by two, and they're like, "Oh, it's four. And you have to help them, but not get the answers. If you want to be helped, you don't get answers because you don't know what to do next time. So, um, all right, let's get back here. Uh, he just likes power, and uh, I'm pretty sure every, everyone does. People don't like getting controlled either. I don't like getting controlled because if someone's telling me what to do, I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm like, just do it. Like, I'm doing it right now. And um, that's why, like... I don't like my mom controlling me. I know I, I have to do it because I still don't know what I'm doing too much. So I can't control my mom because she knows a little more than me. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, so 
Um, and if I can't control her, then who's going? Then if I can't control <laughs> my mom, then uh, then she has to control me. So um, that's why we're doing this right now. Uh, my mom has to uh help me. Uh, she's not giving me answers. She's just like helping me. You could lead a horse to the water, but you can't make a drink. You can't just force water out of his throat. You just say, hey, here's the water. Take a sip. Sometimes they don't even tell you to take a sip. They just say, hey, here's some classes. Just walk into the classroom. They're not going to make you learn, and they're not going to like babysit you. My mom doesn't let like babysit me. She just says, all right, do your work, and she walks away. She's not going to make me do my work. She's not going to supervise me unless uh, she's sitting next to me. Sometimes she supervises me, but yeah, let's get back up here. Um... Uh, okay, let's go here. So, yeah, um, Sam Walton liked to fly airplanes. And, uh, Bud Walton, he didn't, no, not Bud Walton. But I'm not sure what his name was. It said Bud or Buzz, but, um, he did not really like, uh, he didn't really like Sam flying. Because, uh, you think Sam would be the guy who would kind of crash it? Because, like, um, would you rather watch someone fly the plane? Who's, uh, who, my, okay, let's say... Uh, you have a clone of yourself. And would you rather have the clone fly the plane or you fly the plane? I'm like, I'm not trusting my clone, I'm doing it myself. Because if someone has more experience than you, let them take control. But if someone has less experience than you, you're not going to, going to sit in the back and watch you crash the plane. You're going to land it yourself. So um, that's why it's kind of the thought that, like, would you rather uh, fly the plane or let some maniac take control of it? Um, mommy, would you take, would you fly the plane or have someone else to fly it? Uh, See, wait now, I, oh, of course, they don't know how to drive? No, I'm not going to fly okay, and I'm not going to let them fly. It says you and, like, some other person, you both don't know how to fly. But when do you would have? Would you rather fly or would you have the other person fly and you sit in the back seat? I have to pick one or the other? Yeah. I'd rather be the one who fly, of course. Exactly. Because <laughs> you, you don't trust them, but you trust yourself. Yeah, you might crash it, but you still feel safe, safer than when they're doing it, mm -hmm. because um, you feel like you have, you feel like you're weakened. So at least you're probably trying to fly and you run out of gas and hit the water or something. But mm -hmm. um, okay, let's get back here. Uh, where was I? All right. Oh yeah. So all right, it says that the first door they open after um after they got to wait, where were they at again? Well, wait, I think it was Florida, but, all right, it says, they just stayed in the air, wait, it says, our pilots stay in the air about as much as anybody in their businesses. Name, they like to do a lot of traveling, and I heard one part, it says today, they still like to hustle a lot, like, um, I mean, they kind of, uh, they still, even though they're old, yeah, I'm pretty sure they passed away already, I'm not sure about Bud or Buzz. But, um, it's pretty old, but, oh, uh, by the time the back this video, he's, like, this old, I'd say, like, 70, 80, um, he looks kind of old, but, uh, they were still flying around and taking some trips. Now, they don't do it anymore because, they're, um, they passed away, but they still have some people do it. I'm not sure if they still do it, but, um, that sounds like a pretty good idea because I don't trust somebody else to go shopping would you rather have someone shop for you or you shop your own clothes mm, i have someone shop for me you want someone to shop for your clothes because it's not important it doesn't matter. if you don't know what they're getting well i mean i would tell them what i want and then after that after a couple oh, yeah, times yeah, yeah. they do for me because um, i don't waste time so I, doing I, I something would, that i wouldn't have some goal. random person going to the store and buy some groceries for me so i'm like where are you going to buy <laughs> I, I have I have someone yeah, yeah, grocery shopping for yeah, me. You need yeah, to tell them. you can just. It's a list. Go get it. I don't want to waste my time. Go get those little things. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of afraid that they're gonna steal like my they, money and not even get the groceries. No, they they have the credit card and then you know they give you receipts. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to be doing everything. Let that's not important. You want to like put your time, effort into the important things. Like you don't want to clean your house. You want to hire someone to clean your your house. You know, you need to leverage in order to be big. Yeah, but at least you need to tell them what to do. Be the guys in control. In control. Um, at least tell them what to do. Don't I uh, give them freedom, but don't give them so much freedom that they could turn against you.
Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that you still have monitor, you have to verify. Yeah, yeah, we see. You could, yeah, you could give your employees freedom, but don't give them enough freedom to turn your company upside down and, yeah. and fire you yourself. Uh -huh. All the important things you do, it. so they only do the yeah, small thing. Yeah, you can let them roam around the campus, but you can't let them destroy it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. like you're pretty much the game. You do either you play the game or you be the game. Mm -hmm. Be the game, you earn the money. Would you rather go to the bank or be the bank? <laughs> I'd rather be the bank because mm -hmm. that means everyone's giving me the money. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard that banks make a lot of money too. Yeah, that's your goal. You want to be the bank. Mm -hmm. I don't plan on working at a bank. <laughs> I might run a bank. I might buy it randomly. Like not work for the bank. You're the owner, the I, owner I, of the I'm bank. I'm the owner. <laughs> bank. But it's not going to be my full time. That's going to be like a part time thing. I'm just going to buy a bank and say, Hey, Kenneth, you mind running this bank for me? I know you're not as highly experienced, but I know uh, you're my um, you're my wingman, so you might as well just go in. <laughs> so if anyone's going to run the bank, I'm going to own the bank. I get all the credit. The CEO is Cameron, but the C uh, like the second guy, or the CEO, oh, would be my brother. He gets less credit, but he does more work. Why do you think the chefs barely get any credit? The waiters get all the credit. They think the waiters made the food. The chefs, they're in the back. They do all the dirty work, but they don't get much credit. <laughs> like, um, cast or crew. I learned something uh, at my vocal. I'm not I'm not doing it anymore because I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to sing. But, um, uh, you'd rather be the actors or people in the back who make all the sound effects. People in the back, you do a lot of work. You barely get any credit, except for at the end, you're like, oh, yeah, that's the, ca that's the crew, that's the crew. They made all this, they ain't dumb, and then they're just pretty much it. Uh, but for the cast, you're the, you're singing, you're dancing, and you're going to be the frontliners. Everyone's going to see your face, and they're going to be clapping to you, not the people in the back. Like that's why you always volunteer to sing. <laughs> you yeah, when you're, when you're watching a movie, do you think about the special effects and when the people made it, or do you think about the actual actors? <laughs> you see the actors, not the people in the background, because they're pretty much invisible. So. Yeah, would you rather be the, uh, the spectator or the player? I'd be the player, so. Um, alright, let's go over here. Um, it says that, and I was talking about some other stores, and they used to make, uh, they said, Sam was so proud of in the old Coca-Cola plant, so I guess they made their own Coca-Cola plant. And it says on Thanksgiving Day, uh, oh yeah, we opened the thing on Thanksgiving Day, and the store was horrible, and we're standing on the front with Sam drove up. <laughs> If he had told the truth that they would be disintegrating, they said the store looks really good, guys. Enjoy what he left us. Meaning that um, he had to feed kind of like positiveness and positivity into the store because he knew the store was doing pretty bad. Um, they opened on Thanksgiving, which is kind of a bad time because everyone's at home. But Black Friday, yes, that's absolutely crazy. Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving. I thought it was before, it's after. Right? So one day, everyone's all chill, and then everyone's all like happy, thankful, and then the next day, it's like chaos. I'd say Black Friday is a day where most people die. Like, <laughs> um, because people might be a shopaholic, they might pass away from shopping, there's gonna be some riots, there's gonna be looting the place. No, not me. Well, it's a day people won't steal because everything's cheap. I would steal if it's cheap. But then again, they might think. It's just an ordinary day. We just keep on stealing. But um, it might be the less expected day to start stealing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I'd say Black Friday is kind of crazy. But anyways, uh, he just says that the store looked up for good. We need constructive criticism. Saying, but don't give it too much. Otherwise, you're going to be bad. Like, um, I was doing this thing once uh, where I was asked to evaluate someone. And I was too critical. Meaning that, uh, like, I didn't really like it, so, um, I ended up giving them too much constructive criticism on the speech, and, um, it didn't go too good, uh, cause I, the only thing that I said it was good was say, hey, you had a good eye contact, um, you sound, uh, you had a pretty loud voice, but then I went on to saying this, you stuttered a lot, <laughs> you sound like an impromptu speech, and all this other random stuff saying like how bad it was but now I kind of feel bad because um he kind of forgot that it was a speech day so he just made it on the spot it was it was actually really good for like a six minute random speech on the spot but um i still i kind of critical um and he wouldn't like it because 
um, negativity is not that good. I try to be positive, bring in some good stuff, but I brought up too much bad stuff. So, um, and a person who's more positive, they become more happier. It's like a smile or a sad face. Kind of like that. So, like, don't be too critical. I, I actually I had to learn it the hard way when, like, um, he was like, okay, you hurt my feelings. And I was like, um, so, um, I think that'll wrap it for today. Um, I think that's all I have. Yeah. And now it's talking about, like, people who are just walking around. Do you want to read to the part where you stop? It's yeah. It's been two days today. Continue. It's right here. Yeah. This is the face Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, we got into this video. And make sure that um, positivity, um, like, erase any negative people out of your life. Well, if they're negative against you, then take them out of their life. If the negativity towards other people starts to hurt you, take them out of your life. But the first time, let, let it fly. If the second time, let it know, get out of here. So, um, pretty much, you can give people chances, but, like, you can't really, like, you can't really give them too many, otherwise you could see that it's an advantage of you, or they're kind of dragging you down. It's like a weight. Is this a bad weight or a good weight? You might want to check a little, but after like a day, you're going to be like, alright, get out. So, um, make sure you're like, it's kind of like a diet. Um, like, take out some bad stuff and add in some better things in your life. So, um, don't try to replace people. You can replace them by, uh... Talking to them less, you could talk to them about other stuff, but maybe things that won't impact your growth. So, um, know what your friends are for uh, different reasons, like study friends and fun friends. So, uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Sam Walton, and maybe Kenneth will go up. I'll have to get it up. I'm about to go to sleep. But, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye for now.